Hello and welcome to this service of online worship from here, St Stephen's Lansdowne, uh, part of the benefits of St Stephen's and St Mary's Chalcombe. I'm Philip Hawthorne and I'm the Rector and it's really great to be able to spend this time together um, in Epiphany, which is the festival that we celebrate this weekend. We're going to be thinking on Sunday about our response to Epiphany as each church in turn, St Mary's and St, and St Stephen's. But this is a chance for us as a church to reflect on Epiphany. Uh, you may not feel that we are a church if you watch this every week or even if you've just joined, but we are a gathered church of an online congregation. Because wherever you're watching this and whenever, God unites us by the Spirit. So we're aware of all the people who are joining in this act of worship together. So I hope you feel a part of it. You are very welcome anyway. So we're just going to take a moment to still ourselves and to pray that God would open and align our hearts together. And we're going to do that in silence this week. So we'll just spend a moment of quiet together. into this holy space which is within us and between us. We invite you, loving Lord Jesus, to be born in us, to show us your will for each of us and for us as a church. And we ask that you will give us the humility to worship you with all our heart. Amen. Oh, excuse me, I'm still getting over a, a pre-Christmas cough, which has turned into a post-Christmas cough as well. Okay, our readings for this week. The first one is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. And from Matthew's Gospel, more familiar. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For you observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
I think most of the people I speak to about New Year don't like it, and nor do I. I find it's far more about sadness than anything else. Making New Year's resolutions, they're generally very unrealistic. But I love epiphany. It feels like New Year grown up. It's so perfectly situated in January as well, named after the Roman god Janus, you may know, with two faces, one looking back and one looking forward. It's not just so much the shallow wishing for improvements to your life. Rather, it's about an intention based on a reflection, an audit of your life and your journey. Things held in that liminal moment between what has been and what can be. And the Magi's visit perfectly give us a way into this once we disentangle them from the nativity scene. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the nativity scene, being part of the world's Christmas story. There are precious few times that Christianity becomes such an important part of people's lives. But the Christ child, parents, animals, shepherds, and three wise men are all mingled together. And they were, for me, when I went to theological college in 2005, not that long ago. The very first essay I had to write there was entitled, Compare and Contrast the Two Infancy Narratives in the Gospels. I had no idea there were only two accounts of Jesus' birth, nor what the differences were. Luke has the Annunciation, the Emperor Augustus, the Census, the Inn, the angels and the shepherds. Matthew, the one we heard today, has the prophecy of Messiah, King Herod, a brief birth, and the visit of the Magi. And it's clear from the narrative that there are several misunderstandings when we see the nativity scene as a whole. It's clear that they arrive sometime after Jesus was born, not at the time, maybe up to two years later, and that they visit him in a house, it clearly states. And there is no reference to there being three visitors. That comes from the examples of the three gifts. And there were probably loads of magi, possibly women among them. So they'd have needed a huge caravan of cooks and servants and candle uh, camel keepers and gift bearers, as well as tents and all that they needed to, to have changes of clothes and to cook. It's not that important, of course. But what is important is what we can learn from these visitors specifically. What is our epiphany? at St Mary's and St Stephen's. So as our offering of worship today, let's focus on the precious gift that we bring as a church and a church made up of us individuals. And we're going to do that by making a journey of unwrapping three layers to that gifts. And the first layer is wisdom. The word used for the visitors is magi, and they were probably royalty or at least high nobility, but they were also intellectuals, astrologers, mystics, sages, seekers after wisdom. So to spend a minute or two looking at the text to see the wisdom that it contains is to follow their path. They are followers from a different country, a different religion, Zoroastrianism. But God leads them so wonderfully and so naturally to the place and the person of their seeking, crossing 
all kinds of boundaries and borders. This invites us to cherish the gifts that we have, each of us and as a church. And like the Magi, to seek the way to Christ. This might be through study or through the natural world, God's creation, or an interior means of dreams and reflection. The thing is to know that Christ calls us and draws us by love, that we might discern the path of God for each of us. These are moments of epiphany. That's the first layer. The second layer is faith. The Magi trust not just their discernment and their journey, but who they find at the end is who they are seeking. They trust to the extent that they persevere, test their calling. They respond to the promptings that God has given. And what and who they find might well have been a surprise. In their homes, they have discovered the foretelling of Messiah's birth. And we too, in our Old Testament, our Hebrew scriptures, have found many prophecies of Messiah. We hear them read at Christmas. Born of a virgin, wonderful counsellor, prince, king, ruler, mighty God, everlasting father. Nearly all of them foretell might and power, royalty. Matthew tells us that the Magi come expecting to find a king. So you can imagine as they get closer to their destination, the roads get messier, the houses get smaller, the neighbourhoods get, well, dodgier. And at the end, a surprise to find the child in a house at best of the ordinary, the poorest. And what a sight it must have been to see these fine-dressed nobles welcomed in to see the child, squeezed in, probably in turns. And imagine the neighbours confronted with the massive exotic caravan waiting outside the carpenter's house. And yet they don't question it. They trust that where they have been led is the right path, the right way. And this child, the one that they came to find. And this leads us to our final wrapping, humility. This is how it starts for the Magi, laying aside their expectations, their status, their difference, and worshipping, bringing gifts, but mostly giving themselves. And here we reveal what we seek. How do we come to Jesus in this new year, in this moment? Not in the past, not in an ideal future, but now. Here is our intention, here is our realistic offering. We might say about our faith, well, I must pray more, I must go to church more, I must read the Bible more. All very well, of course. But it starts with now, in the humility of this moment. One thing that I've realised in preparing this is that Herod who is notoriously fragile of ego, threatened and fearful, as we read. On hearing a delegation of distinguished and intellectual nobles from a foreign land had arrived, must have expected them to be coming to see him, the king. 
So, what a shock that they weren't. And an even more shock that they sought another king within his kingdom. Herod is so far from the worship that the Magi bring, and from Jesus' own mother, Mary, who knows the heart of God so well in her song that she sings, called the Magnificat. He will bring down the mighty from their thrones and lift up the poor and the lowly. They know the king doesn't have to be wrapped up in a palace. And Epiphany, for us, doesn't have to be a massive angel chorus revelation. It rarely is. Let's hear an echo of the last verse of In the Bleak Midwinter. Yet what I can I bring him, give my heart. God invites us to come to Christ as we are, with the humble gift of our whole heart, our expectations of ourselves and of God stripped back to the bareness of a winter tree. But I remember learning that the branches of a winter tree aren't really bare. They already have the tiny buds that are all ready to flourish. We give our hearts to Christ in worship to allow Jesus to be born in us, to know that he is our life, he is our all, everything that we need to be ourselves as a church and as individuals. So as a church, let's let go of what we look back on. Let's sense the expectation of what we look forward to. Branches of the tree with humble buds in place, yielding to Christ in the precious epiphany of this moment. I'm going to say <coughs> some liturgy together now which you'll find in the description on the video. I'll say all of it. So if you don't want to look at it, then just echo the words in your hearts. In our beginnings, as we enter a new year, God lies in the empty spaces, bringing light to old things. God goes on, spreading life beyond where we have been. God is always creating the wonder of newness for us. Let us worship God. Each of us carries within us past experiences, past failures or mistakes, which lie like burdens within our lives. Each of us has a history of relationships, things which we wish we had not done or said, or which should have happened, but never did, and which will not enhance our future together. In the silence, let's reflect on what those words mean for us. Take all these, our burdens, into your life, O God. We lay them down in faith for healing, forgiveness, recreation and release. As we kneel before the child who is our God, let us affirm our faith together. 
In this new beginning, in faith we claim our life together, full with the sharing of our gifts and the gifts of God, empty of pride because we stand before God's holiness, searching in our journey towards deeper truth, empowered by the life of the Spirit among us and the friendship of Christ Jesus. In hope, we commit ourselves to a greater dream for this year and the grand adventure of being your people. Amen. And we continue in prayer together. The prayers this week are based on those in the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church and all God's people. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers as we celebrate thy bounty and beauty in this season of Epiphany. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We thank thee for the year past and we offer thee the year ahead Help us to be willing to kneel before thee and worship and allow thee to be our all in all. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee to lead all nations in the way of peace and health. Look with pity on those in Ukraine and Russia, Gaza and Israel, Iran, Sudan and Yemen and all places. Comfort the grieving, heal the wounded, and turn hearts from war to peace. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We hold the leaders of the nations, especially our own Prime Minister, that they might rule with honesty, integrity, and true humility. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all places of education as students return after Christmas. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, and especially Bishop Michael and Bishop Ruth, our Archdeacon Adrian, Stephen, our Area Dean, and those within our churches, Debbie and Andrew and Emma at All Saints Western. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, of whose only gift cometh wisdom and understanding, we beseech thee to behold our world in thy heart's loving gaze. Grant that we may live with responsibility for the goodness of the earth and live our lives sustainably. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our churches. Prosper our mission and make us worthy stewards of the souls for which you have given us to care. May thy will be done in us and through us. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We humbly beseech thee to comfort all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity, naming especially Sally Pym, Bill Fraser, Bob Carlton Porter, Caroline Kay, Mike Clare, Tory Peters, Simon. Space for you to hold the names of those on your heart. We pray for those who have communion at home, Bridget and Barry, Mary Young, Paul and Caroline Chaudois, Simon Marshall and Vivian Simpson, for whom we pray. We bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, remembering the families of those who have died recently, Chris Young, Adrian Morey and David Arms. 
comfort those whose grief is acute in this time. And we bring together our prayers as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us with great confidence, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please remember to keep bringing food if you're coming along to the churches, or to give food for food banks in supermarkets, or if you can't get to supermarkets, to just give to food bank and for Action Pantry and all the places in Bath who feed those who have got so little money in order to buy their own food and food for their children. It's been great worshipping together with you. Have a really good week and take these words of blessing to your heart. May God bless you in your body with health in your mind with awareness, in your soul with the company of the Holy Spirit, that together we may all produce a harvest of light to the glory of Christ, our newborn Saviour, whose flesh we are, whose name we bear, whose love is all. In the name of God, who is creator, redeemer and abiding spirit, may God, the Holy Trinity, be with you and remain with you and all you love Pray for and remember in this epiphany moment and for always. Amen. Bless you.